Okay, so I'm going to present you uh, today the uh, yeah the Takabishi OPC products, and uh, there are two products I'm going to present. That's the DXP OPC server product and the device gateway on Docker. I will explain, of course, the differences and the main uh, application, the main uses of these these two products. So let me start first very briefly with uh, corporate the profile from Takabishi Corporation. So we are a Japanese company based in Kyoto. We have about 600 uh, employees and uh, turnover about more, more than $700 million. So basically our activities are uh, organized around the factory automation devices and industrial equipment. So we are selling these parts, uh, semiconductors and devices, also another segment, another business unit. Uh, building facilities and utilities and information systems. Uh, the latter two are mainly done in, in Japan, so that's not uh, done globally. And uh, yeah, the second section, that's more the, uh, the products that I'm talking about, the OPC products, uh, it's hardware and software mainly. And that's our proprietary product. And we have a system engineering and software development uh, team that's uh, handling that. And that's really intended for factory automation. And uh, yeah, it, it, it really is an information system about uh, factory data. So Takabishi also uh, joins a lot of, uh, yeah, let's say consortium like OPC Foundation. We are a member of OPC Foundation. Uh, we are a uh, OEM uh, partner for Iconics. We are active in the CLPA consortium and of course eFactory Alliance because yeah, as Takabishi, we are already there since 1926, already a lot of years on the market. Also a lot of years working together with uh, Mitsubishi uh, Electric. So let's start with this first prediction, the DFV DXP Explorer OPC server. And it's a product that is, uh, yeah, the last year it is integrated into the Genesis 64 software suite. And as you can see here, this is basically the concept uh, that you need to look at. The DXP server is a software product. It's, it's based in the middle, as you can see. On one hand, it connects to all uh, factory uh, products like PLC, robots, and CNCs. It connects to, uh, it's able to measure instruments from several power plants. You can have it connected to infrastructure and monitoring uh, systems, to buildings, of course, and also all kinds of sensors. And this software is a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a machine vendor specific protocol, but it's also able to deliver open protocol. So you can have both protocols there. And the server is able to uh, contact to a number of uh, a large number of, uh, let's say, brands of products that you face in the market. So at the bottom side, it connects to the factory floor. At the top end, it connects to the SCADA environment, which is the Genesis 64 fully integrated now. So as it says on the top, it connects the production site and the Genesis 64 via OPC. And OPC is the international standard protocol. So you get a high performance. It's ideal as a communication software package for large scale production systems. It gives you support for more than 230 different types of products coming from more than 80 vendors uh, like PLCs and, and sensors and all that kind of products. And it has a very high reliability over more than 20 years, 40,000 licenses shipped worldwide. So it's, it's a product that is developed uh, since, since, since decade to become what it is today. And it's, uh, as it says, it supports, it, it's really flexi flexible because it supports a large number of types that are there in the market. Here we have a short overview uh, of those 230 different types. Of course, we have Mitsubishi, Melsec uh, PLCs, Siemens, uh, we support Rockwell, Allen Bradley uh, are supported. Also Omron, for example, and, and other brands, but also standard uh, products like or standard networks like Modbus, SLMP, CC Link, Bucknet, for example, in the in the building automation and EEC standards like 61850 and 6870 and of course DNP3 as well. So apart from PLCs and open networks, it can also be connected to robots or CNCs from Mitsubishi, Kawasaki, uh, but also it, it, suffer, it, it, um, it, it can be used for software like OPC UA, OPC Classic, and it supports databases. So it's really, yeah, large uh, portfolio of products that can be uh, supported. 
I said it is integrated into the Genesis 64 environment and you can use it to monitor and control your factories and your facilities. So here you see the, 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 the diagram, the picture again, you see here a mix, for example, in a factory where you have Melsec, CMAC, uh, Rockwell and, and Modbus products. They connect and talk to the DXP server, which is integrated into the Genesis 64. So you can use Genesis 64 to have a visualization of all your data and status of your products. So the Genesis 64 collects the real-time data from those various devices via our OPC server and visualizes and, anal and, analysis and analyzes that data. So it gives you, because it's integrated, it gives you a centralized management of equipment and the Genesis 64 can communicate with this uh, server via OPC UA and OPC Classic, dependent on what the customer uses. Benefit is, of course, it's a built-in independent system and you can activate the license the exactly the same way through yeah, the licensing system that Genesis 64 is using. So this license activation, Iconics web licensing uh, procedure that you need to follow to get your Iconics licensing, you can also use to activate here this DXP server from Takabishi. So that makes it for the end customer very convenient. It's also very easy to configure this DXP server. You can have, yeah, you could say we can have a three step configuration to do that. The first step is that you select the proper device and the communication protocol. So here in this picture, you can see in the middle uh, here, the Siemens, for example, is selected. So you select from the Siemens type on the right, right, right hand side, you select the right uh, series, the right type of PLC. That's the first step. As a second step, you set your communication parameters. So you set your protocol, your IP address, port number, and uh, all those port settings and device settings. You need to select from the Siemens one, for example, here to, at the right hand side, you see the S7-1500, 1200, even S7-200 you can select. So that's the second step. And the third step is that you set yeah, the settings for your tags. So you yeah, the registered data, the tag information, address, tag, uh, tag data type and all these things and then you can start and yeah as a yeah, kind of a four step you could say okay you must enable of course OPC UA server functionality and in that way you can make sure that the DXP server communicates with the Genesis 64 environment. So that is the three step approach to do the settings. Of course if you if you have done the settings and the process is in operation you want to monitor uh, using Genesis 64 so you also need to do a three-step configuration to do that and the first step is that you create uh, the OBC UA network setting at workbench and it can be done via the workbench environment in Genesis 64. The second step is that you sp specify which tags you want to monitor for example from from the graphworks environment and the third step is that you specify and monitor the device data from the graph work. So here you can see the thresholds and the very and the, and the, the values of the different tags. So it's also easy to monitor the data. A tool that we also uh, developed and also deliver with the DXP server is a, a conversion facility from the Capware server environment. So a lot of customers uh, are used to uh, use Capware because of the history with Iconics and they, uh, uh, yeah, it's very convenient for them to get a kind of a conversion tool uh, for all the tag settings so they do not need to do all the work again. So here we develop this uh, this uh, yeah, conversion tool and it's very easy to, to do that conversion. It's not done for all the 230 brands that we did, but for the most important brands that are there in the market, like the Mitsubishi ones, the, uh, the Allen Bradley ones, the Siemens ones, of course, and Modbus and all these kind of things. Therefore, we delivered this tool. Also, this tool is very easy to use. As a first step, you uh, look for the uh, export uh, feature, export function, export CSV file function from the Capware server. And that's where you, in this way, you can export all your tag settings, put them into one file, and that file can be imported as a second step into the Device Explorer OPC server. So it's, it's very easy here to do that conversion and set up that file. If you look at the DXP server, you have three different types, three lineups, you could say. It's an enterprise, an advanced, and a standard one. And at the bottom, you see the 
the graph that's showing the differences. The enterprise one is the one that suppose, uh, supports the most. So it supports OPC UA as, as a server, the OPC UA functionality. Uh, scripting, it has no limits. And the connectivity, there is basically no limit because it, it supports all the brands that are there in the market. So this is, this is the flagship, you could say. One layer below that, we have the advanced version that also supports the OPC UA functionality. You can have only one script here, functional limit, and you can have one vendor, for example, a Rockwell or a Siemens or a uh, Mitsubishi as vendor. And if you select the vendor, for example, the Mitsubishi one, then it does support all the different series of the Mitsubishi. So that is, that's the advanced version. And the standard version, which is of course also and, and the lowest in pricing, you could say, it does not support OPC UA. It's it's OPC Classic only supported there, but it do, do it does support uh, the one script functionality and the one vendor uh, functionality. So also with the advanced and the standard, there is uh, yeah they do not support all the vendors that are supported by the enterprise version. But also here you have a subset. There is a list when you order an advanced or a standard license you can also see the, and this is the overview of all the parts that are supported uh, there are even some exotic plcs that are supported in the enterprise version but nine out of ten times most of the customers do not use that and they could live for example with an advanced license instead of an enterprise license which saves them some money the differences uh, are shown in a in a, in a in an Excel file, it's it's available in a kind of a table and you can easily download it and have a look at it. This DXP X, uh, OPC server, uh, we also keep on working and improving it. Uh, we started off with uh, yeah, just recently in November 2021 with version 1097.1 of the Iconic Suite. And in that is the current version of the DXP server, version 6.4. So here we expanded the connectivity, uh, also with the IAC 61850. We have tag import there. We have Modbus server functionality. So that's already on the market, no problem at all. That's working. And uh, the next version we are working on is the version 6.5, uh, January uh, next year coming up already quite soon. We have support Windows 11 and also expand the connectivity uh, yeah, uh, features, and that's something we will keep on doing because these, this, this, this list of brands and types of products is, is growing and growing, of course. And also for a major version that's coming up in autumn of next year, we will have uh, operability improvement. We have OPC UA historical access, some alarm and condition additions that we are doing, and of course uh, support IoT interface. So this is a roadmap that will grow and of course it will be set up and, and managed together with, with end customers, but now specifically together with Iconix and Mitsubishi Electric Automation to find out the most uh, features and requirements that are there for the market. Also if customers, uh, uh, let's say if, if a lot of customers ask for a specific feature and it's not there, it's even possible to discuss that and see, okay, can, can we fit that in? Can we develop that? So that's basically this first story had to do with the DXP server that's basically on the factory floor or in a building. But of course, the, the, yeah, the world is going bigger and bigger and everybody's talking about IoT and IIoT. And of course, also Iconix uh, uh, was aware of that and they worked on the IoT works. Uh, uh, features and, and IoT Works functionality. And in there also at a certain level, the IoT Works need to be coupled to the factory floor on one hand and to the, yeah, to the cloud on the other hand. And that's where the device gateway on Docker comes in. It's a product that looks very much like a DXP uh, uh, server. Uh, we did not give it the same name because it is a different product. It's also intended in the IoT environment. So there are really some different features and, and uh, functions inside. If you look at the picture, however, if it is first picture, you see almost yeah the, the, the same picture as uh, the picture that I start with. Only now you have in the bottom again all the factory planned and building and sensors, but then look at an IoT uh, purpose uh, point of view. In the middle we have the device gateway, and on top here we have not the Genesis 64, but we have the IoT Works, which makes the connection to the to the cloud possible to Microsoft Azure. So again here you have the connection between the 
production side and Azure via IoT works. So again, here it's it's easy to use. You do not have any, yeah, you do not need any setting tools. It's easy to set the device gateway on Docker or via a browser connection. Again, uh, the connectivity supports 170 types of brands. So you see this is lower than the DXP, 60 vendors that are supported. Uh, and it's also easy to embed. It's it's a kind of a Docker kind of an application, so it can be embedded in various environments. And here we uh, we integrated it again in the Iconics uh, suite. So again, access over 170 series. Basically, the the most famous name Mitsubishi, Siemens, Rockwell are all there again. Uh, it support all these PLCs, but at the bottom you see some some new things popping up as well. We have the machine tools here more expanded. So we have Funux CNCs, Mitsubishi VNCs, and, uh, and and Mitsubishi products. So there was a long list of supported Mitsubishi. Uh, types of products and tools, and because of our history with Mitsubishi, uh, we support uh, yeah Modbus. Of course, we support different robots, uh, Kawasaki, Jaskawa, Fanuc. Uh, we can have contact with those as well. We support still a, a general network like MT Connect, Bucknet, but also some others like even Bluetooth, some serial connection, and digital and analog I/O solutions, which is of course all of them, all of these kind of products are used in IoT environment. So here again, this picture shows again the integration into the IoT works. Also looks a bit like the same, like, uh, like it was done with the DXP server. You collect the data uh, at the bottom from all these products and connect it to Azure via IoT works. And you know, you use, you need, you use IoT works as a visualizer and a collector. So IoT Works collects the real-time data from the equipment via this device, uh, via this device gateway, and you can visualize and upload load that data to Azure. And the data can even be integrated and managed with the Genesis 64 if that is needed. So you, uh, from the feature point of view, you do the collection again of site data via this IoT Works, and IoT Works can communicate with device gateway via this OPC UA network again. And it's it's a Linux environment. It's a Docker uh, solution that we provided. So again, the benefit here, we have a built-in uh, device independent system, and you can also activate the license, the same as the licensing from uh, for the IoT Works environment. So again, here IoT Works licensing sheet as an as an example. Here you can also do the the settings for the device gateway on Docker. Uh, also here we have a kind of three-step configuration for this device. The first step again, you select the device type and the communication protocol. Uh, as you can see here, you see three tabs where you can see, you see the data source, the IoT interface and some management. On this data source, you can see it on the left hand side, data source you see as an example, Melsec or Cimatic. And the plus here means, okay, if you need another brand, you go to the plus, uh, you press the plus button, then you get to the right hand side where you get the list of products. For example, here you can say, okay, I, I want to have an Allen Bradley connection and then you uh, select your proper device. As a step two, you do the settings again for the IP address, port number, CPU type, network parameters, and then uh, yeah, in the step, step three, you again do all kind of tag settings. So this looks very familiar or very similar to the DXP server, but then for the device gateway on Docker product. Uh, also here you have to uh, enable the OPC UA server function because it does not know upfront whether you're going to communicate via OPC UA or OPC Classic. So that's also a setting you need to do. But basically that's it. And then you can easily get access of that data and you can uh, use IoT Works to visualize here again. Here are the tag settings. Tag uh, 01 here has a value of 50. You can show it in a nice graph. Uh, so all these possibilities are, uh, yeah, uh, can, can be used or realistic to use. So again, here you get easy access of the data of the device gateway from IoT Works Visualizer. And you can show and use all that data because IoT Works also supports uh, the data logging. So you can uh, use that data logging and upload that data to Azure. 
Also for this one, we have uh, different types of licenses for the this device gateway on Docker. If you are in the IoT works environment, you see that there are uh, three types. Uh, yeah, quite convenient, small, medium, and large. And this has a relation to the number of tags you want to monitor. Small a license uh, is uh, suitable for 500 tags. Medium, we go up to 5,000 tags, and large is about 16k tags. So that's only three types and uh, all the types are able to uh, connect to be connected to 16 different devices. We are working on that one for the future, for example, in a roadmap to expand that. But this for the start, uh, uh, yeah, 16 devices more than enough, I guess. Also for this one, we are working on a roadmap, of course. Uh, we have a new release of this one, a current release version 3.0. Last month we released that and integrated into IoT Works. Just came on the market. We're going to expand also here connectivities to TNP3, porting connectivity from the DXP Explorer. And in spring next year, we will uh, inform you about these new version uh, with all the new features. And also from this one, we have a new major version. It's not really planned exactly looking at date, but we are looking at these features, uh, for example, read mode uh, configuration via Azure is one of the things we are looking at, and also here, historical access, and of course, expand the connectivity when needed. So this is, this is, oh, where is it? My final sheet went very quickly. Get this one as well here, okay. So this is the story I wanted to give you today. Uh, so Takabishi uh, is able, of course, to provide you with lots or Iconics or is able to provide you lots of information, technical information. Um, I'm uh, headed, I'm located here as a business development manager in Europe. I'm located in the Netherlands, but of course I'm working very closely together with our headquarters so customers can have support via a direct connection via the web, uh, but also some, some movies uh, uh, are available via YouTube channel and uh, they're all available via our far web channel factory automation web uh, channel where you can find all this information from the XP server and device gateway.